Hola, hola, hola. Here we go. A minute early. I need to learn to put music to this um, like uh, Lizzie does and like uh, uh, Nally and Black Dave. Put music to it. Get you guys going early, especially when I'm here by myself. Um, welcome to NFT Filmmaker Squad. This is the D-Gen Roll Call. Um, we are talking today um, about uh, film and Web3. Hey, Phil. Um, when, when I'm recording, I just start talking. <laughs> I'm waiting for some people to come in, but I'm going to bring you up. And uh, let's see. There you go. Um, yeah. I figure if anybody comes back and listens to these recordings, um, then uh, then I don't leave them just empty space. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. I mean, it's a, been a little bit of a crazy week, so um, I hear a little bit of an echo. So is that uh, maybe? Yeah, maybe that's that's why. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty good um, considering. Uh, all things, and uh, so, hey, Soap, so you guys made it through the storm, huh, last week? Yeah, kind of, I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shit roaming around my garden right now, it's been crazy, we're just not used to this in London. I saw, I saw that, and I was like, because that particular day, it was really, 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 really crazy windy in New York, and I, and I saw the big, like, tornado, like, hurricane over, over London, I was like, no way. We're feeling it all the way over here. Um, yeah. Anyway, welcome, guys. Um, uh, waiting for a couple other people to get here, but super psyched that Phil's joined us. Um, I can't wait to hear about what he's doing. And hey, Julian and uh, Violette. Um, it's great to see you guys. Uh, do me a favor. If you haven't retweeted, please tweet this out. Um, and uh, remind some of your friends that we are here today. Um, I think Rafa is... Sp- Rafa's going to be joining us as well. Um, and I just wanted to make this sort of an open conversation with some new voices um, that we haven't heard yet and projects that we haven't heard. Next week, uh, I'm going to say this a couple of different times uh, today. Next week, uh, Miguel Faust is dropping Cayadita. Uh, um, and I mean, if you don't know about that, um, really impossible, I think that if you're in film, you don't know about that. Um, but what we're going to do something super, super crazy. And uh, for the first time in a year, we are not going to be hosting in this space. Uh, we are going to, uh, Miguel's doing tw- a 12 hour um, marathon and we're going to jump in his space from one to two. And, uh, and I'm going to host it from there so that we can all be there to support him and his really incredible drop yeah i'm pretty psyched about that and then um on the fourth on friday a little top secret thing that's going to happen uh with miguel which i will uh be telling you guys about in the discord um and then the following uh wednesday we're gonna have uh machin amick um if you know her from riverside uh and she has just directed a film and we're going to talk to her uh, about her film and so i'm pretty psyched about those are the three um wednesdays i have no idea what else miguel has planned for mondays with miguel and i don't know what charnik has planned on the saturday matinee but i'm sure they're going to be great they always are uh thank you guys for being here um we often get a slow start and so i'm just going to say if you aren't in our discord yet if you're new to us um We've been holding spaces for a year, every week on Wednesdays. And, um, and as much as I, I uh, make fun of everyone for calling themselves the first, um, we really were the only, only room, the only space talking about film uh, a year ago. And we've been here every Wednesday since, and now we're on Mondays and Saturdays. And if you want to um, uh, get involved in the community, the Discord link is in my, um, is in my link tree. So I'm psyched to see you guys here. Um, I'm going to open it up with Phil uh, and see, you know, hey, Susie, um, hey, Sherry, uh, and see, uh, get Phil to start talking a little bit about his project. Because for me, you've just come on, you've just come on um, the radar pretty much for us. And, uh, and I'm super psyched that you're here. 
Hey, yeah, well, no, thanks for having me because it's a real, a real pleasure and honor to be, uh, to be invited on and, yeah, kind of been seeing you guys and what you're doing and the people speaking and, yeah, amazing projects and, um, yeah, just the energy and excitement, uh, yeah, that you kind of see from the Twitter groups and Discord, etc. is just, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Um, and so, yeah, so, so thank you first. Um, and, yeah, I think we, I mean, maybe a bit of background about us um, and a bit of context is, um, um, uh, we've got a kind of number of companies, what, one being sort of Goldfinch, where it all started from, um, which is owned by myself and my business partner, Kirsty, who's, who's the CEO. Um, and um, that's been going for just over eight years now. And um, that started as a, as a financing entity. And um, over the eight years, we've kind of just built on our production capability. And um, uh, we're pretty proud of it as well, because it's all, you know, all, 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 all kind of, you know, bought with our own blood, sweat and tears. And, you know, no one's ever written us a check in terms of, you know, a big hedge fund or family office to do the funding at all from, you know, kind of sc scrimping and saving and finding people to support, you know, our vision and how we wanted to, you know, kind of fund films and, um, you know, structure them. And, 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 and very much, you know, all of the funds that we've deployed have been into the indie film space, indie TV space, and a handful of indie video games as well. And like I said, over the time we've, we build on more production capability. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, brought in a great head of production called Ben Charles Edwards. Um, got really excited, released three films back end of last year, um, which we're really proud of. I think we're really starting to hit our stride in terms of like creatively, what we want to produce and how we produce it. And more importantly, like what we actually enjoy, um, which I think everyone kind of forgets a bit um, is um it's, it's yeah so many producers i don't know what other people feel like uh, you know we i think we're lucky enough or, or maybe unlucky depending depending how you look at it to meet a lot of producers and you know it's amazing just how how scattergun their slates are and their approaches to to to, to the content that they're gonna they produce and and, and 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 create and you kind of feel like you know that's good and i think you, you do need a diverse slate but also you need to have a brand and to show that you're kind of backing something and you're passionate about something because it's such a such a long and arduous process to make a film I, I, you know and, and, and i just feel like yeah there's there's so many we see that that, that don't have that and and anyway I, I feel confident now we were, we're really getting our stride we're getting our brand you know sorted in terms of the stuff we want to make and we've got a really exciting slate coming up this year so that's Goldfinch, and, and part of that is, is 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 we have a sort of few partnerships and um and 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 with, with different people and businesses that, that that we're excited about and and that we help want to help support and grow. And one of those was something called First Flights that we set up with my business partner Nick Sadler. And First Flights was from the start; it was going to be a uh, first uh, kind of first second time uh, filmmaker incubator. Um, where we take people in, we give them a little bit of kind of seed funding, give them a little bit of support and uh, put them in the right direction. And where that ended up with over the last couple of years is us running a quarterly short film fund. So every quarter, we um, everyone submits their ideas. We probably get about 500 plus submissions. Then the top, um, normally the top three um, are funded uh, and produced and released. And it's a brilliant way um, I, I mean, I mean, it's a brilliant. I, I, you know, I'm going to say because I'm a bit biased, but I, I, it's a brilliant scheme. I think to, to for people to get something out there in terms of a proof, proof of concept of what they're what they're capable of as a young filmmaker, but also as a proof of concept of that IP and you know the potential of it to pick up and develop further into a feature. Oh, um, Phil, I gotta, I just gotta interrupt for a second because you know you're really speaking speaking my language, um, and and it is a, you know it is like a miracle every time a film gets made, I think. I mean, there were so many things that you said. I just wanted to stop for a second because I know that you're going to fill us with a lot a lot more cool information. Um, but yeah, you know, it's a it, it, it's just a miracle to get a feature. But I even think a short film made, um, you know, trying to find the funding, at least in the U.S., is um, is so challenging. Um, and uh, and I'm going to say Screen Actors Guild doesn't help. SAG, SAG after is a is a bitch. Uh, and I'm a member. I say that, and I'm a member. Um, but you know that what one of the things that you just said about like funding short films. I mean, that is such a a beautiful, uh, uh, like a beautiful thing. I, I I've tried to do that myself. With in, in fact, uh, I had a grant. Uh, Alma Haral and I did a thing together 
where we were able to get one grant out for, you know, women over 40 who were trying to, you know, get a short film done, get something done because um, they had not had the same opportunities uh, coming up as women, you know, in the last 20 years. So I, I love what you're saying and, and I'm going to let you keep going, but I, I got super excited. And I also think you need to know Sophie. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, yeah. And, and, and I think the, the, um, the, the great thing we built with, with, with first flights is, is a fantastic community of really excited and engaged filmmakers um that are yeah like they want to talk about what they're doing they want to hear about what we're doing they want to submit their ideas they want feedback um and um and that's when it got us thinking you know um uh you know a little over a year ago like when all the sort of nft um kind of stuff started to become a bit more mainstream and we've been looking at blockchain for a while and thinking how can we you know, utilize it, um, you know, like a lot of people were in the entertainment industry to fix a lot of problems that we face um, on, on, on the production and funding and distribution side of things. Um, and nothing stuck. Um, and then and then the NFTs kind of, you know, kind of came mainstream. And, and, and Nick and I were talking and saying, well, I think I think this could be the sort of practical adapt, you know, use or, or way in at least for the mainstream of the entertainment sector to, to understand what is possible with um, kind of web three technology and that it can fix things. And so we, we kind of started scheming and kicking ideas around. And where we got to is essentially what we now term as FF3, which is our, which is our platform. And the idea behind that was to create, um, a, a, you know, crowdfunding platform using web three for filmmakers to come on and utilize um, and for people with crypto to invest into, into filmmakers and projects that they want to. So, the, the very brief kind of, you know, kind of uh, process that it is, is that someone comes on with their crypto, they exchange it for tokens um, in, in the project they want to fund. And then those tokens give them access to, to different tiers, depending on how many tokens they have. And in each of those tiers, you have um, rewards that take the form of um, whether it's access, to events or Discord, etc., whether it's um, content um, and and obviously artwork as well, and that's all kind of wrapped up into one NFT as well. So kind of one NFT per per, per tier level contains all of that utility. And where we're now at today is that we kind of ran our first, you know, MVP beta, whatever you want to call it, proof of concept. We ran that uh, probably a month ago with a with a um, with a film called The Dead of Winter, short film by a filmmaker called Stephen Graves, um, who just so happens to work for Decrypt as well. Um, and uh, we hit our, hit our minimum raise, which was fantastic. I mean, Jesus, that was difficult. As you just said, Jordan, it's like, you know, it, it's difficult to raise money for shorts and it's difficult to crowdfund as well. And you've literally got to get on the phone to everybody for like nickel, nickels and dimes and be like, you know, you said you were going to put that $10 in, you know, can I come around your house and pick up the $10? But it's even more tricky with crypto because you've got to get them to set everything up and, um, you know, educate them around how to do it. Anyway, we hit the minimum raise and we had a lot of fantastic feedback. We've had a lot of interest since from, from different people. And now we're just kind of taking stock. We're building all of that feedback, fantastic feedback in to make the, the platform better, to make the user experience, to make the onboarding and the accessibility so much easier. And we're on the lookout for the next kind of project. What we want to do is raise for another short film project um, in April. And then we're eyeing, eyeing up a raise for a feature in the summer. Um, and then our aim is to then essentially open it out. So anybody who wants to come on and list a project will be able to after that stage. Um, because that is our, that's, that's our kind of vision, our sort of really ambitious vision is that, you know, is, 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 is that this is a tool for anyone to raise money and to access to access funding um, and to make those things more accessible for you, uh, you know, for a lot of people that, 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 that struggle to find those things in the current traditional entertainment system um, and, and sector. Um, and, and, and loads of other amazing things as well in terms of, you know, connecting, you know, filmmakers and their fans and their patrons far better and, 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 and vice versa, giving filmmakers and patrons a far more valuable thing in return um, you know, for supporting, you know, emerging, interesting, exciting, you know, boundary pushing content and, 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 and creators. 
Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at, and you know, we're we're super excited um, about where we are, um, and and just like I said, trying to have as many conversations with as many people as possible over the next couple of months to 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 make sure we have just some amazing partners in place, whether they're bringing us you know content and they're filmmakers and creatives, whether they're artists and collective collections of artists we're talking to about making really shit hot um, artwork for the projects. We're, we're having a few funding conversations, which which are interesting, um, and um, just you know other other partners that like what we do and and and, and want to chat, and we try and find a way to explore and get involved. And and I think the fi- the, the final bit just to add that we've got really excited about in the last couple of weeks um, is, is is how we work out the sort of distribution piece to it all. Because as a producer and a and, and a funder, it's the sort of key final piece that's that, that that's almost for, not forgotten about but it's, it's easy to forget about and it's and, and and that's the bit that i think there's a few people thinking about it at the moment in in, in web3 but it's going to be the really the really key bit is, is is how can we use all this technology to better to better distribute content um and we've got some ideas around that we're having conversations around it um but we'd love to talk to more people about it and, and, and just hear what, what people think is possible because I feel like we can we can we can do this a far better way. Um, it's just about getting the right people around the table and 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 and, and, and working out what that looks like, I think. And then you there's know, a seamless sorry. I was just gonna, no, no, I was just gonna say, um, I know that Susie's amazing at finding things and uh, and she she was able to pin uh, the distribution conversation we had two weeks ago is really, really good. We had, uh, because we think about that a lot. And and even from the beginning of discussing things last year from whether we were discussing, you know, how are we gonna finance uh, these films? How do we mint them and file sizes and platforms? Will they be around? You know, um, distribution was always part of that conversation. And so um, that, uh, that might interest you. It's recorded um, uh, just to, to hear what uh, Blockbuster DAO and what Beam and what Kamani and a few other people came up and 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 discussed. And that's also a conversation that I've had a lot with a lot of different people on Zoom. Like um, uh, I get a lot of uh, DMs and, and ultimately I'm trying to schedule a lot of these conversations in here so that, you know, it's beneficial for the entire community. And it's not just conversation that I'm having. Right. Um, but I, I think yeah. you're right. I think that that distribution is, you know, we're starting to figure out sort of the the, the financing thing and distribution is most definitely um, a big, a big and very exciting part, I think, Web3 distribution. Yeah, 100 percent. And I think there's, there's there's a way of not just fixing problems with it. And, and, I, and I definitely will dig out that that that, that recorded spaces because I did actually listen to a beginning of it. Um, and that's what kind of triggered what I said before in terms of Nick and I getting excited about it and thinking how can we how can we better understand it and come up with some ideas but I, I do think it's it's not just a case of fixing problems that, that, that we have with distribution I think there's a way of really like you know just making it something into into a, into a real experience um, which is where a lot of the sort of theatrical exhibitors have, have, have struggled um, is, 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 is how do you how do you keep that sense of experience and an, an event around going to the cinema and I feel like with the technology and with you know potentially the stuff you could do in the metaverse or whatever it looks like that you could really create an amazing experience in a event um, around new content, around old content um, that you could bring back to life in so many different ways. Um, and yeah, you could, I, I, I think sky's the limit in, in, in this space, as, as well as, like I said, solving some fundamental issues that, you know, blockchain smart contracts, um, you know, does with transparency of revenues and distribution of that back to, you know, production and financiers. I, I, I think you can make this into a far better experience for the film for, for the audience fundamentally which is which is which which is what we need to do for sure i have so many questions uh for you and um uh the first question i have actually because i didn't check um is your uh the, the short film that you guys uh i, I i'm assuming you meant it a couple of weeks ago you said that case study is that pinned anywhere that we can bring it we can put it at the top of the of the space here uh, yes, I can try and work out how to do that. Uh, Sophie can go grab it, <laughs> right, Sophie? If if you have it pinned to your, the top of your um, of your profile, uh, uh, we can get it up here. We can get it 
up here for you so that other people can go take a, uh, a look at that. I'm going to circle back to that, uh, the question I have there. Um, uh, but, oh my God, what was I going to just say? Um, oh man, you said so many things. Oh, I was going to tell you that I had a conversation the other day and I'm going to bring them on um, about experiences. Uh, and this is a new platform that blew my mind. They've been in cryptocurrency for a long time and they're like, you know, tech pro type guys who are now um, creating a platform very specifically for film and for film experiences and for minting. And it was the first time I heard something that was so unique and I will be bringing them um, in uh, in probably about three weeks, I guess, because the, the what's happening right now is um, uh, I just told you guys what's happening for the next couple of weeks. But speaking of the metaverse and the metaverse experiences, I went on a tour yesterday uh, with Natalie Crew, who's like, you know, an OG in the space. And she um, she took us through some really, really cool experiences in the metaverse and I on, on, on crypto voxels very specifically. Um, and so when I tell you guys uh, that something really cool is happening on March 4th, uh, just know that the metaverse can be a lot of fun and a lot. And, and, and I had a blast yesterday um, walking around uh, several different really built out things. And so for filmmakers, uh, I know that um, Binks down there, they're, they're, they work in music a lot, but also they're going to be doing something in the metaverse as well. Um, and, uh, and of course, Ian Grant, who's not here right now, has Granting Wishes. He's got the, that theater, but they're, um, they're that cinema theater where he's going to be doing some token gated type of work. But yeah, it's going to be really fun, Phil. It's going to be super, super cool um, to, yeah, to I do think things like that. The, um, exactly. And the thing I was talking to someone about, I think earlier this week, um, who yeah, is, is, is thinking about how could they create yeah, it, it, those things that you're just describing really is um, like one of the biggest grossing, uh, um, uh, one, of, one of the biggest box offices, one of the bo biggest box office in, in, in London um, or in the UK when it was being put on um, was the secret cinema. Um, and, you know, their whole idea of you take, you just take a really cult film or really interesting film, um, you know, and, and more recently they moved it into kind of, you know, stuff that was just being released or just had been released. But when it first started, it was really quite niche and culty films um, that they would then build this amazing evening around and this whole, you know, uh, you know, event that you'd absorb yourself into. And I was talking to someone earlier this week about saying like, that is, that is the potential of this is you, is you create that whole environment and, and, and feeling from sort of entering to leaving that you hang around in it for hours, you, everything you touch and feel and wear relates to, to what you're about to watch. And you might even not watch, watch all of it. I mean, I went to a secret cinema and like you, I watched, you, you kind of dip in and out of the story as you go and as, as, as you're, as you're exploring the place like that, that's, that's what I kind of feel. And that's what I feel is, is, is possible. And that's probably only like, 10% of what is really possible that I understand at the moment. Um, but if you could do that, like just think about, you know, the, the, it was sold out like pretty much immediately after the tickets going on sale, you know, in, in, in the UK, every time they release something, like you have the potential to create that for almost everything you release. If you're, if, if you wanted to, or, or, or there was, or there was a, an appetite for it, which I think is so cool. It is. Yeah. I'm telling you, sorry, Sophie, I'm just going to say, I went into like the African museum yesterday that just completely blew my mind like it was like eight levels of just like the most amazing work and you know and there's all these, these little things that you can do that, that create great experiences and I went also into Zoe Steckel's uh, fashion house and it was it was a lot of fun I mean I it's I think that like like the secret um I forgot they had that in New York as well but uh I think that you're absolutely right. It's going to be really super cool. So if you know you want to say something, Brian, I see you. Rafa, I sent you uh, a request to come up and speak because uh, Rafa also has uh, a project that we discussed. Um, but for you guys who are just uh, coming in, if you don't know who we are, we're the NFT Filmmaker Squad, and uh, we have been meeting every Wednesday for about a year now um, and really trying to build community and carve the a space in this ecosystem for filmmakers. Um, Web3, it's about community. And, uh, and so our, our intention is to really have a place where we can offer support, um, 
you know, offer uh, innovative ideas, come together, brainstorm, and, and, and find ways that filmmakers can, can um, create sustainable livings and do what they love and, uh, as artists uh, and, and, and all of that. So if uh, you want to join the community, we do have a Discord. It's uh, in my link tree. And also we, uh, we launched uh, two more film spaces because the film space moves so quickly now. It's like light speed in the last couple months. Um, and so we have Mondays with Miguel and the Saturday matinee with Jason Jarnick. So there's a lot of opportunity to have conversations here. And um, we're so psyched that you guys are here and a part of um, this growing community. If uh, you um, know me at all, you know that I'm a big believer that if you've come like most filmmakers here and you don't have big bags of, of crypto, like a lot of people you see throwing around, um, uh, there are micro actions that you could take that, that are super um, powerful, whether it's just following each other and not just the people on stage, but the, the, the people to the left, to the right, you never know who is going to be like that person that's going to um, inspire you. If you can retweet their work, they're like, we found um, uh, Phil's um, tweet up there. You know, if you give it a, a retweet, you never know who's, whose eyes might be able to do something for that particular filmmaker. So those are micro actions that we can take for one another as we support one another and build this community together and, and, and really sort of change the lives, not for just ourselves, but for filmmaking in general. Um, so I think that's pretty much what I got to say about that today. Um, oh, oh no, a couple more things since we've got a few more people in here. Um, uh, next Wednesday, we are, uh, we are actually not going to meet in the space. It'll be the first time, um, but we're going to do something super special with Miguel, who's, doing, who's uh, launching his NFT um, project uh, for Caidita. And uh, he's doing a marathon, 12-hour um, marathon. And uh, so we're going to hop over there at 1 p.m. Eastern time on his space uh, to support him so that we're not splitting the support, you know, so that we are consolidating um, all of us together as a community to get behind him. And then on March 4th, all I'm going to say is keep your, um, keep uh, 1 p.m. Eastern to 3 p.m. Eastern um, open and just follow me for clues. Um, and, uh, and then following Wednesday, we are, we'll have Machen, uh, a Mick from, um, I can't even remember what show she's on right now, Riverdale, and, uh, and her film, and we're gonna talk to her about, um, you know, why she is uh, coming into Web3 and what she sees for that. So um, I'm super psyched that Phil has been here. Sophie, I know you wanted to ask a question, so why don't you jump off with your question? And then Phil, since there's some new people in here, I would love if you were wanting to sort of go back and recap a little bit um, what you're doing in the Web3, what you've done in Web2, and you know, up until this point, because it's super impressive, and, and then your vision for this. And uh, Rafa, I'm coming back for you, and Brian, I'm gonna bring you up. If you wanna come up and get involved in the conversation, just hit a, a, a request, we're gonna start bringing people up. Hey Phil, no, I was just gonna say it's so funny you're talking about um, secret cinema because that was that was literally my job just before COVID. I was doing Stranger Things with them, and it's so funny because that was, in a way, like that's one of the things that started getting me thinking about crypto was exactly that that we, you know, we're curating these experiences that are theatrical, but it's film and the potentials of doing that with this space. So that that was really just just my comment, and it's such like an interesting crossover because I just feel like feel like no one's really thought about it like that. And in a way, I, I come from quite a theatre background and I'm um, moving into film as well. But I feel like the in the NFT space, those things aren't as different as I think we think of them in the real world. And I feel like no one's really tapped into that quite yet because even, even this space, we're talking about film, but when we're talking about experience, that's a kind of theatre, right? Which is, yeah, which I just feel like we're not quite making that connection yet. So it's, yeah, I'd love to hear more about your plans for... Um, the kind of like experience side of things, basically, and recap everything for everyone else. The uh, the Stranger Things one, I wish I wish I could have made. So that's that, that's cool that you were doing it, Sophie. Um, the um, uh, the, the plans for the experience thing. I mean, this this is literally just come from kind of scheming in the last couple of weeks and speaking to people. But I I think it's about well, what we're trying to hone in on is is um, 
is, is, is how can we create a space? Yeah, that there's multiple areas within it, um, all set up for different films, um, all the kind of encapsulate what I said before about creating, you know, an event and, a, and an experience around the film. Um, and um, and yeah, it, 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 we've gone no further really than thinking about it as, as I sort of said, where everything you do from when you kind of come through and enter it is, you know, all links back to pieces of, of, of the film and the, and, 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 the, and the project. So from what you wear, you know, you can maybe kind of change into the different clothes, you get the choice of different clothes from what you eat, from what you um, uh, from the games you play, the the, the 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 things you can pick up and interact with, um, and and very similar to Secret Cinema, the, the content itself, the film itself, you know, kind of is in there in the background, and you can dip in and out of it. But more, it's about the the, the experience as a whole, and you're exploring it and and doing it with friends because. I, I feel, and this is just personal opinion, like the only way we're going to get more people to embrace this new style of distribution potentially and, and, and moving the meta is if they kind of drag their friends in and that's sort of event or kind of sociable aspect to it um, is, 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 is to kind of congregate and, and do something together in, in, in what could be a really cool space. But our, our, our vision for this is almost that you can kind of hover above and you can see all these different worlds or these different kind of cities or zones and you can kind of zone in on one and go, great, I love this. I love the look of that. Let's dive into that and let's, let's have an evening there. Well, let's go to this other one. Um, uh, but like I said, it has the potential to not only you know, it'd be fantastic for new content that's being made and new films um, and fantastic if you can build in all those ideas and, 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 and potential right at the start when you're making content. And But I think, you know, same as Secret Cinema has the potential to, um, you know, reinvigorate and represent old films um, in, in a new way too, but in a, in a far more cost effective way to Secret Cinema. I mean, the cost of production there, I, I don't know whether you knew what it, but, but it was, it must have been so high, just the cast of people involved and the sets and the locations, et cetera, et cetera, you know, must have been huge. Whereas, you know, doing this, doing this online, and it, you know, it will, will hugely reduce that, I would have thought. Um, and would probably be for the same cost as like a normal distributor would pay in PA just to release a film, you know, a standard indie film in their territory. So, um, so yeah, that's something that we're, I haven't necessarily given any specifics, but that's kind of where we're thinking at the moment we, we, we could take this, but, but open to talking to more and more people about it. And, and I think, you know, again, as I said, that there still has, that, that there must be a bit underneath that um, is really key to, um, to solving the problems that we do find in distribution within within the sector of transparency of revenues and the distribution of revenues and doing that through blockchain and smart contracts um, and that's really key that's really key for everybody but it it, it kind of adds a really important bit onto what we're doing in ff3 and the rest of our business which is you know if you're coming on and you're supporting a filmmaker and you're putting money in we want to be able to say and we've also distributed this content here and this money's coming straight back in on, onto the chain and is and is transparent and visible all the way back into your into your pockets essentially so um so it's kind of twofold for us it's practical and and um and and, and, and kind of you know practical based but it's also you know kind of um, uh, creator based as well and, and, and making sure that it's a, the best possible experience and thing for the audience to do to get them excited as well. Um, I'm going to so, jump in. I'm going to jump in one second. Uh, Intima, I just, I muted your mic. If you can mute your mic, please. Um, you just unmuted it uh, until we can call on you. Intimate, intimate, call in intimate. So um, sorry, Phil. I uh, also, a couple other things. Uh, um, uh, if you want to come up on stage, the stage is getting full, so which is really exciting. And um, after we talk to Phil, we're going to talk to Rafa because uh, we had planned on uh, talking with him uh, today as well. Anyway, Phil, go back to what you were saying and um, and uh, super psyched about this conversation, even though I might sound a little unfocused. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and yeah, just uh, I, I, you know, going back to like how how we came into the space and. Um, and, 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 and yeah, a bit of background and context on us. I mean, uh, you know, our, our business is called Goldfinch, which I own with Kirsty, who's, who's the CEO of it. Um, and we started kind of eight, over eight years ago, um, trying to, um, trying to raise money and deploy it into, into indie film, thinking that we could do it in a better way that had been done in the past. And, um, and we're pretty proud that, uh, you know, it's, it's still all our company. We haven't kind of taken any, you know, big 
big checks from anyone in terms of you know hedge fund or or uh, you know family office or, or 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 you know every every bit of money we've deployed we've had to kind of you know do the do the hard sell on on investors and and people to to give us the smallest amounts to to put into projects and work hard to make sure that comes back and 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 yeah, and ultimately that, that, that's been very stressful. And but it, it, it's led us to being in a great position that we're really proud of. That it's that it's our company. It's still an independent company, and and and, and we feel pretty. Um, uh, we, we we feel strongly that we need that we should be continuing to support you know indie film, TV, video games, creators really. Um, and that's kind of where we came from. Is, is 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 at the start we were putting it into indie film projects, um, some indie TV, and a handful of games. And from there, built out other things that we do. Um, production has been a key one, especially in the last couple of years, where we've really narrowed our focus onto stuff that we, um, stuff that we really get excited about and we love doing. Um, and um, uh, that doesn't mean to say that we don't get drawn into things that uh, I think everyone in the industry has this, this this tendency, you know, the kind of shiny thing just outside of our reach that we know we know we should, maybe shouldn't try or we've tried it before and we had our fingers burned, but we just can't help ourselves going for again. Um, so, so that you know, like everyone, that is a that that is a constant you know affliction. But we but we feel now more than ever we've got a strong view of, of what we want to make and why we want to make it. And we released three films back end of last year, which I think were really strong uh show of what we're capable of um uh one was called father of flies which was a horror film we did uh one was called um a bird flew in um which was which was a, a film around lockdown cinema verite um production uh which we had a fantastic kind of cast for um, people like sid Derek jacoby and um uh francis barber and uh jeff farhi um, and I've forgotten loads of other people as well who were amazing. Um, and then the final one we did was Quant, which was a documentary about Mary Quant, the fashion designer, um, which which was really brilliant as well. Um, so yeah, we've got an amazing slate kind of building off the back of that this year that we're moving through. And um, also part of the business is we get involved in other it's supporting people and ideas that we really like the look of and 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 and, and we want to support. And one of those things was a company called First Flights that we set up with Nick Sadler, who's our partner in it. And the idea with that was setting up an incubator for first, second time directors um, to help them on their way really into the industry, whether that's just a bit of moral support, a bit of guidance and access to the people we know, or whether it's a little bit of money. And where that kind of came to was us doing a, we do a quarterly short film fund that pays for normally two or three of the of the top entries that come through every quarter to, it pays for, for those short films to be made. Um, so that's fantastic. It obviously gives proof of concept for that filmmaker, to go and show what they're capable of, and it gives a proof of concept of that IP that then can be onwardly developed, uh, you know, into a feature, into a mini series, or, or whatever. And that's that's what we used really as a as a as to that that's that's what we were thinking of when we started to get into this kind of Web three space, and, and and when NFT started gathering sort of mainstream momentum started last year, we were thinking how could we use this? This could be a real application for kind of blockchain. Um, uh, and tokens in, in, in the sort of mainstream and get everyone in the sector you know, actually understanding them. And that's when we sort of hit upon this idea or, or we was kind of kicking around different ideas. We're like, well, we've already got a fantastic community of people in first flights. They are really responsive. They submit their ideas. They want to, they want feedback They're you know, they're, they're, they're really fantastic. Why don't we take this web free technology, lay it on top and see if we can really kind of, kind of, uh, you know, see where it goes. And then the practical sort of use of, the, you know, the practical, uh, the, 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 the practical show of that was, was what we now call FF3, which is a crypto crowdfunding platform. Um, so you come on, you bring a crypto on, you exchange your crypto for tokens. Those, those tokens give you access to um, tiers of rewards in exchange for funding a project. Uh, and within those tiers, those rewards take the form of, um, of content, of access to things like discord and um events etc and also um artwork um and that's all wrapped up in an nft for each of the tier levels so all that utility is wrapped up in that nft and, and our vision for that we've already done one raise we did the dead of winter um which was kindly pinned to the top of the the, the twitter spaces um we've learned so much kind of doing that in terms of what we need to improve and get better on we're busy doing all that we'll be doing another short film raise in april We'll be doing a feature raise in the summer. We've got some amazing um, possibilities for that. Um, and then, and then our real, our real goal is let's open this up. Let's make this a tool and a service for everyone. So, any filmmaker who 
you know, emerging filmmakers that's struggling to find finance, but has a brilliant idea or is trying to set something up that's maybe a little bit more avant-garde or risky or pushing the boundaries. Let's give them the platform to connect with patrons and investors that want to support these people and want to support the industry. Um, and in, in exchange, get something of, of, of value in return rather than, you know, traditional Kickstarter where you've got a kind of T-shirt and a hat and a mug. Let's just give them something Let's give them a direct relationship for one, but then let's also give them something of value in the NFT, in the, you know, the access and the, the relationship. But also one of the key things I think that we're going to be able to do is give them a real position, a kind of investment position in the project. So we're, we've been talking to you know, various uh, partners about how we can put in the UK an FCA wrapper around the platform, which means when that patron and when that investor puts their money into the project, they could potentially get a, a, a share of future revenues offered. Should the filmmaker wish to give that up, we, we would like to add. We, um, um, we, we do, we do uh, have uh, lately had a little warning about making sure that we don't call these things investors, investments, and things like that. Um, although you may already be aware of that, uh, Miguel certainly is the expert on that, not me at the moment, but, but we're learning. Um, I, I, I know that you only had an hour with us today. And so since it's a quarter, uh, you've been here 45 minutes and I want to just open up the floor um, to, you know, if, if you guys have something, you guys who are up here on stage, you want to ask Phil something or, or because, I mean, he's doing so much and, and there's, there's a lot to deep dive in there to um, please raise your hand. Um, you know, if you want to, to uh, yeah, Miguel, I see Miguel, Brian, you've been so patient. I'm going to let Miguel go first and then Brian. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and if you want to come up on stage, please send a request because um, we only have Phil for, you know, around 15 more minutes. And Miguel. Hi, yeah, Jim. Thanks for having me. Just really quickly wanted to mention that um, about this last point you were making about uh, calling the contributors investors and about, um, you know, securities laws and all of that. The things are moving so quickly. Just today, this morning, I had a call with some people who are uh, based in Switzerland, and they are working on on um, tokenizing r real real assets, which could be a house, but it could also be a film, uh, and tokenizing them into actual securities. So uh, apparently, the law in Switzerland permits that, and then you know, in that in that way, you could seek uh, investors with you know no shame in calling them investors and no, and no problem whatsoever with that and offer a share in the revenues of the film so um, so maybe that's going to be possible soon via uh, uh, a friendlier legislation like the swiss seems to be or or i don't know or something something else so um so yeah things are moving so quickly and i keep learning every day so there are solutions for sure the, these people what they were doing essentially is um i mean the, the only caveat here is that so, for example, imagine we were going to do this in Kayarita, which we, we can't because it's it's too late. I, I kept telling them, I wish you had called me two months ago, but now it's a... Oh, you got Sorry. rugged, Miguel. Yeah, I'm here. No, you definitely are rugged. Oh, I'm rugged. Hello? Um, you're okay, back. That's you're weird. Back. I, I get muted. Okay, never mind. Um, so, apparently... Someone, uh, so what they were saying is that if imagine we were to do this in Kayadita, you would buy the NFT that is just a collectible, and then the revenue share would be a separate contract that you would sign with me. And that one you can't really resell. I mean, you could like find a way for someone to buy it from you, but it's not linked to the NFT, and so it's not so easy to trade it in an open market and frictionless, trustless market. But, but yeah, I mean, I think things are moving for sure. So it's exciting to see. The, um, the, the, we've, we've done, yeah, I, 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 I've heard exactly the same things as you were talking there, Miguel, as well. And, um, the, the, the Swiss, the Swiss approach is one that a lot of people are looking at, but the, we've done the kind of FCA thing on a, on a couple of things we've been involved in, like retail products and, um, and the, the same, the same people we used, we're, we're, we've, we've kind of consulted with on this, and um, they've done a, couple, a few ICOs previously, and they they feel that they're sort of up to speed with things and and, and how how it could be done in terms of process and um, the kind of paperwork that needs to be put around it. But I'm happy to share all that, you know, with 
with people once we get there with it. You know, I think you know, the more of us understand it, the better we can kind of structure things going forward. And 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 in turn, the more people that will encourage into it, um, because there'll be an element of, of safety and security put around it. I think is is key. So 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 it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit daunting, but I think. We kind of have to embrace it to, to 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 make sure that we're kind of doing the best we can for for bringing more people into it and and and, and therefore getting more projects made. Great, yeah, that's great. And, and can I ask Phil because you've also looked into this? So someone suggested that no matter what the rec what what the legislation is in the country where you're issuing the tokens from, it's also important to to take into account the the nationality of the investors as well or the contributors however we're calling them but so so even if you were to do a swiss film and the swiss law is fine with you selling securities to anons on the internet if that anon is a us-based citizen then that might make get you into trouble is that is that the thing um I mean, yeah. Disclaimer: I'm not. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a financial professional. But, um, but it, it's as far as I understand, on a base level, it's about making sure you guide the potential investor through a number of kind of due diligence questions before they make their decision. And I believe, you know, some of those questions are around, you know, are you aware of the risks? Do you have enough money to, to, to you know, that this, 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 this isn't, you know, going to bankrupt you or are you going to have, you know, your kids are going to starve? Um, you know, what nationality are you from? You know, because, you know, this is, this is regulated in the UK, for example, or Switzerland, and therefore it's only, you know, it's, it's, it's only, it's only been passed by that nationality for those, those people operating within that company. So if you are aware of these risks, you've ticked those boxes, you still go through with it all. The onus is on the investor rather than the the platform itself is, is, is my understanding. But I'm sure there's, I think there's a lot that's open to interpretation there. And, 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 and the people we've spoken to have said that all you can do is set out a robust kind of route for people to go through and ensure that you're doing everything you can to ask them the right questions at the right stages and have all of your documentation in order um, and, and, and that your marketing, the way you market and communicate, communicate what you're doing is doesn't overly promise, um, just accurately um, communicate what you do and that you're not kind of saying it's, you're going to definitely get a 200% return and, and any rubbish like that. So that probably hasn't answered your question directly, but that's, that's my understanding, which, which maybe sort of in, informs a little bit on what you said. I mean, I, I think that uh, what you said, Phil, and, and what I have experienced just um, getting to know Miguel's process and, and, and Julie uh, Pacino's process um, is that as we're all trailblazing here together, um, you know, I, I, I laugh and joke that I'm really leaning into Miguel. Uh, you know, for my own feature film, right? Because they're, I've got a couple that are just ready to go and been ready for a long time, but being able to watch how he's laying it out and, you know, he's been able to talk to accountants and lawyers and, and, and other people. And so the fact that you're, you know, going to be able to share that as well, again, you know, as you said, it helps the entire community and um, we'll change, we can change the, the, you know, the film world by being able to onboard more filmmakers, as, you know, because it'll be a more secure pathway and um and this is this is the kind of thing that excites me and this is why i founded the nft filmmaker squad because it, this is the kind of thing where we really um band together and we make you know we share this information with each other and and we all win we all we all prosper um in that way um i i see i just want to just i know your time is limited so i just wanted to say uh i saw brian then ted and then uh Lands then Natasha, and you can hear now the construction starting over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, let you guys jump. Uh, and Rafa, you will. Um, I see, <laughs> I see your hand came up. Uh, so Brian, you've been so patient and welcome. Hey, thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, so before I get to my question, Jordan, I just wanted to let you know that I went to the, uh, the link tree thing in your bio, and the Discord link was not working for me. Um, it Again. Said it was yeah, it said it, it said it was expired. Um, so I did this just, on I Monday. You know. I, I put, yeah. I put these, never these expire. Expires. Always. I put never expire on Monday. Oh, that's what you're. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I just, right, I just thank you. to let you know that because uh, I am super interested in joining the Discord and getting more thank involved. You. you guys do. So I so appreciate that. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, so 
my question was, and I, I actually was in a, a space last night talking to Miguel about this, about his, his film Caidita, and um, I've, I've noticed that the, the approaches that um, Miguel and, and Phil are taking are, are, are pretty different. You know, the, the, the approach that Miguel is taking is more, he's, um, he's selling stills from the short film that he made as a way to fund the full-length film and then giving additional benefits on top of that. Whereas when I was looking at um, Phil's project, it seems like he has just collectibles and, um, you know, like little trinkets from the movie that, that uh, you know, are an important part of, you know, that were, that were an important part of the process and that people would want to own. Um, I guess my question is, and, and, and I spoke about, we spoke about this last night um, on the other space, uh, but the reason that I, you know, became interested in, in Web3 for the most part was the collective ownership aspect of it. Um, and I think most of what I've seen um, in the film NFT space has been mostly in regards to funding films and just giving, you know, kind of uh, collectibles and perks to the people that help fund the film. And I guess my question was, you know, once the film is completed and funded and everything, um, how do you, how would you go, like, obviously, you know, this is an entirely new space, you know, there aren't really any rules. Um, how, if, if you, if you are going about it this way, um, how are you necessarily um, making sure that the, the, the film is kind of owned essentially by the people that supported it? I can answer that if you want. Sorry. Or, you, sorry. Yeah, no, happy for you to wake up. You go. Oh, no, sorry. I just wanted to say, like, the, um, the issue here is securities again. So if you're funding the film by seeking contributors or investors, then you can't fractionalize it after, essentially, unless you're signing securities. Because if you are giving them a proportionate ownership over the film after you've made it, then you're selling a security. So there are ways, the, the only ways around that is either you sell securities or you find creative ways, Web3 native ways to maneuver. And I can explain a bit how we're doing it, but uh, Phil, go ahead and explain your approach. Yeah, but yeah, but I mean, I totally agree with that. Um, the, the, the way that we will is, is, is by <laughs> kind of old school way of, of, of playing lawyers and, and, and making sure that we're kind of signed off by the FCA. And as we sort of touched on before, you know, you guide the, the investor through the, 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 the due diligence or the, the KYC, the know your client checks to, to make the, the, the investment. Um, the, the other way is, I suppose you sort of, you know, you go the kind of DAO route, which I think you've spoken about before, Miguel. Um, so you're probably better place to kind of talk about it. But I, I just circle back on where you started the your comments from Brian, which were yeah, absolutely spawn. Like Miguel's approach and our approach are, are two very different ones and ones that can both 100% work going forward. Miguel's, is, as I think Jordan said, is setting out a great uh, kind of roadmap for how if you're if you're if you're a creator if you're a filmmaker this is how you can set it up to to raise money from your fans and by building you know this this community around your project um and and, and all the fantastic assets and and and, and artwork and cre creativity that can spin out from that whereas what well, our approach is kind of looking at it from the opposite end which is saying how can we provide filmmakers with the structure and the platform to come and do that on because they might not be as as capable as some of the people on their spaces and, and certainly definitely won't be as, as capable as Miguel. Um, how, how can we kind of, again, provide that platform that people can come on and, and easily set up arrays and, 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 and utilize all this amazing technology that we got? Yeah, and c can I just add that the essential part here why we can't fractionalize the ownership of the film is that the film doesn't exist yet. So like in music, for example, Royal is already doing this where the, a song already exists and then they're selling fractionalized ownership over its IP and hence you get to share into the revenues. But that's because the, the song already exists and this is the caveat that makes it fine in terms of securities laws. But if, you need, if, if you're raising the money in order to create the artwork and, and hence you're fractionalizing an artwork that doesn't exist yet, then that's a, that's a security by definition. So yeah, as, I, as uh, Phil was saying, the solution that we found is the DAO route, which essentially is not fractionalizing the ownership, but it's fractionalizing the, the decision making over the revenues of the film. So after the film is finished, the revenues go to a DAO, and the NFT holders have a governance power over the DAO in order to vote on what is done with that money. But they don't have 
a claimable ownership of, of that proportion of the DAO because, again, that's a share and security. That's great. The more Miguel talks about it, the more I understand what he's doing. And uh, and I'm, I'm loving it. Um, I know that, again, Phil's on a, on a timeline here. And I believe that it was Lance, then Ted, then I Natasha. Was Ted, was it you, were you next? I know you got rough. Yeah, yeah I, w I was, but um, I appreciate a moment. I'll just make it quick. Sure. I, I, I went the, the approach of the in the United States for the SEC regulation crowdfunding exemption. So uh, uh, under the crowdfunding exemption, a filmmaker who replies could raise up to $5 million by uh, going on Twitter and advertising on Facebook saying it is an investment. And so the, the, the NFT use case we use would be that we, we've gone one step ahead and built a platform that operates on digital currency. And so the Phil's explanation of how to present the data and what he was doing, we actually do that. But, but instead of the, the token accessing the content or airdropping content, we've created a gallery where the general public can even come in with digital cash and consume movie content in the form of screenplays, assets. You click the screenplay, you you see something in the screenplay like a jet. You click jet in the screenplay, it'll take you to the footage if it has dailies, if it was a purchase for um, donors on one level or if the, the project had a, an exemption investors could then start to access receipts and invoices and things like that and so i just wanted to let all the filmmakers know and everybody building building for nfts that there is another level that that this is digital cash peer-to-peer -peer cash and we could trade files and assets and, and information using the digital cash and then the nft is almost secondary but useful for uh uh, non-registered securities not uh, uh, that if it's a donation then the nft acts as a donation that provides the donors the different levels of access and if you have the crowdfund exemption then you don't purchase the nft because in the united states you can't purchase uh, a share under this under this program with crypto but once the investor who has the kyc with the the crowdfunding portal is recognized you can email them a link they can get a wallet you can airdrop them a token that gives them investor access to all that information so it's just a different way to do it we thought it was more of a futuristic way and and what's to come but us as filmmakers we're just looking for the way right so i, I decided to build on the technology find out the potential for the technology and then any filmmakers that want to come with us on this journey or any platform builders that want to come and learn how we're doing this i'm really just giving this back to the industry as i set out to do my first movie and share with people you know what's possible once you know how to build on the distributed ledger framework so um more or less informative asking you know filmmakers understand the difference between donation and investment and that's been discussed. And so the way to do it in the United States is regulation crowdfunding, regulation CF. And you could probably uh, issue some sort of token on a short film, get uh, $2,500 to, to $3,000, $4,000 will get you a broker and an attorney. And now you're in business and you could use that short film. You could use those dailies. You could use all the pictures, the location scouts, the casting videos as a framework to bring potential investors into your project to see that you have the, the ability, the capacity and the plan to, to create the feature length film. I'll finish because I know your time is valuable. Thank you. I, Ted, if you can stick around, that'd be great. I love what you had to say. I just want to make sure that other these other guys get a chance uh, if they wanted to ask Phil something. Right, um, me too. I'll back up. Yeah, no, man, I love what you just had to say. Uh, Lance, hey, welcome. Do you have something you wanted to ask Phil? Hi, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for letting me speak here. Um, I just have a question for Phil and Jordan. So, I mean, a lot of the discussion right now is about the tokenomics, um, the utility of it. But I'm just wondering, this might be off the topic a little. I'm just curious whether anyone is looking um, to do like multi-sensory experiences when we are talking about immersive experiences in Metaverse for the cinema. Phil, yeah. are you? Yeah, I think that's what we were talking. Maybe, maybe it was just before you joined, Lance, but... Um, that, that that's having dug into it for the last few weeks and trying to work out you know the sort of distribution angle on the content that's coming through the platform or will be coming through the platform um or, or just providing a service to other people 
yeah, what could that look like? And I think the real value and exciting thing is about creating, yeah, like a multi-sensory experiential, um, you know, kind of event-based you know, cinema experience, for, for, if, if I haven't thrown enough kind of multi-syllable words into that. But um, yeah, it, it, yeah it's, it's having that, like we were quoting Secret Cinema before um, as, as being like an IRL version of it. Like you, you come into that space and you, everything around you from the clothes you wear, the food you eat, the, the games you play, the, the, the yeah, it, it's related back to the film that, that, is, that is happening around you that you're either within or you can kind of dip in and out of watching. So I think... That, that that that's that's the potential of it as we see it um yeah is in the metaverse so, so i think you're spot on i see okay jordan do you have anything to add regarding that uh well thank you for for asking i mean there's you know we talked about it earlier there are as i was discussing having gone through you know two hours yesterday of so much fun in crypto voxels where it was super yeah. immersive experience uh, as I went and visited, you know, especially when you have like a, a host and a, and a, and a, and a guide. And so, you know, there we are in clubhouse listening to the audio at this point, but we're walking through and looking at all these pieces of art or, you know, all these really cool things that, that crypto Voxels is building. And, um, yeah, I mean, again, that's a, that was a very immersive and I felt very connected to, to my colleagues in there as we were taking a walk through the museum. So, um, yeah, I think we're getting there. For just for the for the sake of time today and for for Phil, I mean, I, this is a you know a conversation I think that that we can continue to have, um, and I love that question. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to jump to some other people just to sort of uh, you know be respectful of films uh, Phil's time today. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, I will follow up with Phil and yourself because I do have some uh, questions regarding that. But yeah, please go jump so. into Thank our you. Discord because I just changed the link again. I'm just gonna have to do it every day. I see. So yeah, it's in my it's in my link tree. Jump in the Discord. <laughs> I know, really. Oh, no. uh, my Thank family. you. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Lance. Thank you. All right. So I think it was. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I think it was Rafa Flinch. I don't know if you still have. If you, I know you had your hand up, but then there's Natasha. So I'm just gonna go with Rafa then Natasha. Um, Rafa, hola. Are you with us? Hi. What's up? Nice to <laughs> meet you. <laughs> Yeah, welcome. Welcome. Um, um, I have a question. It's uh, very quickly. Um, uh, I would like to ask you, um, especially uh, those of you who um, have been in uh, NFT space the longest. I, uh, I only had uh, three three weeks. Uh, uh, I just have. Uh, a real, real puppy NFT, and and I have started uh, selling a collection of foundation, and I'm uh, still learning, uh, listening to you on Twitter space, and I see people like uh, uh, Phil Frickle uh, releasing a short film in NFT space, then then uh, you Miguel are making a feature film. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, so. Oh, hey, momentito, momentito. <laughs> uh, uh, just uh, one second, because because I think that your conversation is going to take us off track just a second, and I know I want to be again super respectful of Phil. So hold on, Rafa, porfa, Natasha. Are you hey, there? that's is super it? kind. Yes, I am here. Um, I, my I don't have a specific question. I just more wanted to thank yourself and Phil, um, and really all the other guests. I'm learning so much here this morning. So um, if, if there are other people who have specific questions for Phil, um, absolutely, um, they, they should go ahead. But I'm just soaking this in. This is like mind blowing information right now. I'm in your discord, Jordan. I'm just looking forward to just, you know, coming on on this journey and learning. I'm a short filmmaker. Um, and I'm just soaking this up. Like my mind is literally like mind blown emoji. Um, that's what we need down there in the, uh, the emojis. <laughs> so thank you both. For real. Yeah, that's great. Well, I mean, some of us have our mind blown every day for a year now, um, and especially the last two months. Uh, Rafa, we're coming back to you. Phil, any last words? Um, you know, because I know that, that you, have an, you have an important date with a couple of important people. Yeah, do you, yeah, a three-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. They don't, they don't, uh, 
yeah, they're pretty hard taskmasters. Um, the, so, so thank you. I mean, it's been, thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. And um, yeah, I can kind of talk till the cows come home about this. I don't know everything. I'm the first to admit that, but I, I, I love you and what everybody else is doing and, and, and telling them what we have and, and, and kind of together we'll kind of work it out and, um, and, and kind of, yeah, you know, future, future is super, super exciting. And if people want to follow me, like always happy to have a conversation, DM me, like, um, follow us at first flights pro as well. And on here and, um, yeah, our discord's going to be up and running by the end of the week too. So we'd really appreciate the love if people can jump in there too and, and, and start the chat. But, um, uh, yeah, again, just thanks for having me, Jordan and setting it all up and, and Sophie too. Um, and yeah, lovely to see some, some, uh, some faces here that, that, that I've chatted to previously. It was great to finally connect with you, Phil, and, and I love what you're doing, and um, and I can't wait to actually get a deeper dive into into a lot of that, and thanks for coming and sharing and um, being, you know, really visionary. Um, I, uh, we all, you know, we're all bringing our unique talents to this community, and it's, it's uh, incredibly important, and so I thank you for, for coming, and i um, super psyched to, to have you jump in any other time you want and uh and go uh, go hang out with those super demanding ones and uh we'll see you soon um i'm gonna before we jump to to rafa i'm going to uh do a quick reset on the room um the nft filmmaker squad has uh been meeting every week for a year um and we have been together really pioneering this space. And, and the intention was uh, when, when I asked uh, four other incredible women to join me to start this, uh, was to be um, a destination point for filmmakers to come in when they, you know, don't know how to, you know, what this, what an NFT is, what crypto is, what MetaMask is, um, what uh, OpenSea is and why OpenSea is always down and, um, you know, all of these different things. So. We uh, we really together, you know, some of the same questions that we were asking a year ago, we're still asking. And so don't don't feel like that um, that you're that far behind because we are all really so very early um, and so many people are doing exciting things. Um, and it's just the, the Web3 world is, is, is moving fast. It does move really, really fast. And that's another thing I think that we all need to, to just, you know, make sure that that. Um, we're taking care of each other and, and our own mental health as well. Um, one of the things I wanted to say is I think that motherfucking Discord link is working now in my link tree. I'm <laughs> so annoyed. Um, and uh, so if you want to join the community um, and, and I can confirm that it does doing, now. <laughs> uh, there's, you know, an op- yes, thank you. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, Discord really got me like on the floor sometimes. Um, so uh but i want to say that we also have mondays with miguel miguel had to just jump if you don't know miguel uh is dropping his feature film nft project which is a crowdfunding thing he's been talking about it he's talking about it and talking about it and uh and it's in one week on one week from today we're not meeting here but just you know follow me and and or be in the discord and you will find out that we are actually going to jump in to make sure that we consolidate our um our support to miguel and we're going to jump into his spaces that day for an hour and be a part of celebrating uh his drop so that's a week from today but we also have uh saturdays with uh, jason charnick i don't know what he's got up his sleeve this saturday um he, he's keeping that really close to his chest and then um we have uh mondays with miguel so uh that's the regular that's the regular but um I also want to say that there's something super special happening on March 4th. So again, watch the discord and watch, uh, watch my Twitter, um, uh, that we're slowly going to roll, roll that out. And it's for the people it's for the culture. It's for the NFT filmmaking squad. Um, so, uh, otherwise, I guess the last thing that I'm always saying, and I think it's really important to not overlook, um, how we can support each other as we're all the pioneers in this space. And, uh, you know, there are no dumb questions. And, um, you know, if you can't, let's say for instance, that you can't uh, support Miguel with uh, buying one of the tiers or collecting one of the tiers, you can always retweet his, his tweets um, at, because you never know who in your, um, you know, 
in your network might see that, become interested, and then they're able to to support that project. And so that's a micro action, but I think they compound. Um, I know that for myself, that when I minted uh, Red Flags, that I had so much community support, um, and, and a lot of that came from people retweeting and quote tweeting and uh, and making sure that, that my voice was heard out there. So um, anyway, welcome to the NFT Film Squad. Rafa, my Spanish, mi español, es muy mal, pero <laughs> I will try. I understand you. I understand you so well. <laughs> Perfecto. Um, I don't know what's going on. Oh, yes. Um, uh, mm, what, I, what I'm getting at is uh, uh, in in this short time, what I liked uh, um, about Web3 and where I'm finding out is it is a great opportunity for indie, indie filmmakers. I always, I always think that films are forgotten in a Vimeo view or in a Instagram light. I think it is the best opportunity for short film, for example, in Spain, it's very difficult to um, get financed for short film. I think that the viewers is very used to the new formats, such as 20, 40, 30 minutes episodes uh, in platform. And, and I think that short film are very um, un undervalued. Uh, you know, this is a new way of democratization the industry uh, and i say i want to uh, develop my, my ideas and i want to earn a, um, a living doing that it is my opinion and uh, the question is do you think that shortfield had second chance here in the shortfield has uh, a new market to explore uh, because in my opinion i think at a, at a, at a lot of talent uh, i think that a lot of talent is lost on platform and that give you visibility, give you recognizing, but in the end, it is the work of many people, you know, who's, who pos, um, possibility, possibly uh, do it for um, very little money. So you believe that there is a, a democratization on, of that, uh, in that sense? Suppose that, uh. suppose that the question is, is very ob obvious because uh, Miguel is... Uh, is, is, found, is finding a, a future feel, I suppose uh, the answer will be yes, indeed. Well, okay. Um, there are a lot of different ways that, that we can go about this, right? I didn't understand the entire question, but what I think you're asking is, is there a, uh, a fair and democ democratized way that um, a film, a short film, can be funded through NFTs on these platforms. Is something like that correct? Yeah, exactly. Bali, Bali. Okay, so um, for instance, I chose with my uh, motion picture, which is only three minutes and 48 seconds, there were a lot of decisions, a lot of decisions around that. One, um, the platforms right now still, at this moment, um, there are no real uh, platforms that, that, that have um, a track record of being able to handle large uh, files, large, you know, MP4s that, that um, what am I trying to say? We are so early that there, even though the platforms are coming for filmmakers, the platforms that we've had to, to choose between are basically, if they're not gated, are OpenSea, um, Rarible, uh, Zora, and um, and I think that that was it. And then there's some gated platforms like Maker's Place and Super Rare and Known Origin. And then there's some other platforms that are really trying to open up, you know, um, uh, file sizes and things. And there are ways, workarounds that we figured out. But just to be very straightforward, when I minted my, my motion picture, I knew that it had to be short um, because the file sizes uh, had to be under 500 megabytes. And and listen, this was only three weeks ago. It's changed, by the way, in the last three weeks. So there were file size issues that I wanted to make sure that I didn't lose cinematic quality, going from 4K and, and crushing it down um, uh, 
to under 500 megabytes. So I chose Zora because to me, Zora has been the protocol that has proven themselves um, to be able to handle file sizes without streaming issues that continue to have a cinematic quality. You can take a look at it. It's pinned at the top. If you haven't seen Red Flags, um, Jason Charnick is the post-production supervisor on that, and he did an absolute exquisite job of not losing the cinematic quality. Okay, that was number. That's just one one thing that I had to think about and wanted to think about. So I thought about under four minutes, and I thought about file sizes. I also had to figure out how am I going to fund this because at that point I wasn't comfortable and didn't feel like I had any assets that I could do a crowdfunding. Having had one of the first Kickstarter, uh, successful Kickstarter campaigns, the whole crowdfunding thing really left a bad taste in my mouth mm, for reasons that are very different than what's happening now in the NFT world and with utility and things like that that excite me. So I uh, was very fortunate that I had someone who believed in me that offered me a little bit of a budget. and I mean, a real shoestring, but I'm a New Yorker, independent filmmaker, and I know how to make that work, right? So... Um, so we took that and we made that little motion picture that we shot in one day. Um, and what I chose to do was, and what my crew wanted is they wanted to be paid in fiat. So again, that's old school. Um, they did not, uh, they did not participate in the, you know, in the fact that it was collected, but th that collected piece did um, get split three ways. So everyone has sort of a different approach. And I think that when I do my feature, I know when I do my feature film, which is um, um, ironically involving a lot of different uh, Spanish actors, um, that that I will be doing something very similar to what Miguel is doing and Julie uh, Pacino. But when it comes to a short film, I think that you, you know, you can choose if you want to do a profit share uh, a lot like what Domino did with his music when his album where he shared, you know, I think he made $200,000 and there was a profit share among all of the collaborators. I hope that answered a little bit of your question. I know it might have gotten long winded, but I was just trying to cover everything. Thank you, Jordan. And thank you for answering, uh, answer, answering my, my question. And, and I think you uh, creating very good in NFT Filmmakers Squad. I'm um, looking forward uh, to see you more. Thank you. Um, I, I see that. I know Susie was up here. You must have gotten rugged and you had a question, but I'm going to go to Suar. Do you have something to, that you wanted to ask uh, Rafa or contribute? Um, hello, everybody. I am Suar Kainde. I am uh, from Indonesia. And I'm fun to, I'm glad to know space uh, about NFT movie, movie because I'm too often to look NFT music and uh, NFT art, uh, JPEG. And then I uh, made this, this space talk about movie because I'm uh, make a, a movie uh, and I make a crowdfunding in the NFT. Can I sharing about my project here? And it's um, maybe um, uh, can. Uh, uh, excuse me one second. Right now we are focusing on Rafa's project. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if we have time uh, before three p.m., then um, uh, we can come back around around to you. Susie, did you have? Okay. Uh, uh, you I, I just want to ask about your problem about how to watching movie on NFT. If you want to let now my uh, opinion. We don't have problems watching a film with NFTs. Okay, okay. I think because uh, to sell a movie, we, we can sell about the movie. We just need uh, sell about the the ticket, and we just. Okay. Uh, so, Suar, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you, Jordan. Yeah, thank you. We can always come back. I'm so sorry. It's my bad. I'm sorry. No, no. All good. We'll come back to you, Susie. Okay. Hey, how are you? Um, I got bumped off, so I, I missed a little bit of it. But the thing I was going to respond to, I think I heard somebody ask about um, democratization. Is that ac is that accurate? Uh, Rafa, uh, that was a little that was part of his question. Yes. Yeah, so if you have some thoughts about that, yes. Yeah. 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 So um, so the the one thing that I when I think about um, democratization, I think about um, you know access and equity, and I think about how um, the NFTs 
can be uh, representative of um, generational wealth. And so one thing I'm, I'm noticing in the space is that many of us who have been gate kept are then turning around and using the gatekeeper mechanism. And so I'm wonder- So one thing I would love for, for, for all of us to just kind of push ourselves on is I recognize that there's a need for that um, and, there's, and there's, you know, potentially value to that. Um, I'm wondering about other ways that people can participate to earn an NFT and thus access to the experience, to, um, you know, whatever the tiers are. And, you know, earning could be whether it's like, you know, uh, uh, time, knowledge and skills to support the community, to support the project um, and thinking about ways to then, uh, you know, is there a mechanism that then essentially, um, you know, th- through this work or through this time or through the skill share, through this knowledge, uh, then you are earning an NFT. And then with that NFT, you know, as you have access to different things, you can then sell it, as we all know. And that's one step towards generational wealth. Um, and then real quick, um, I think Miguel had mentioned something about NFTs, and I just wanted to just throw out the term um, non-transferable NFTs, NFTs where you can't sell it to other people. So if anyone's interested, check that out. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, um, I do know and have participated in that kind of earning um, thing that you're talking about. That that, uh, and and I know that there are some DAOs out there doing things like that. I think that um, absolutely, it, you know, if if the, if somebody has a, wants to make a short film, for instance, um, and wants to create. I mean, it reminds me a lot back early years ago, there was a company in New York called that was formed called Indigent. And it was, you know, right when the digital um, boom was happening for filmmakers. And it was basically, they were way ahead. They were Web3. They were producing films that every single person on that crew got a profit share of. And so that it wasn't just the producers that were running away with the money it was an it was an equal thing and and it you know they they lasted for about five years it was a great idea but you know it's really hard to get um uh the the people who were pocketing a lot of the money as we know to want to change that that paradigm so i do think it's completely possible here i mean i i feel like that there are so many incredible uh filmmakers in this room right now who are making strides to do things like that um and so to answer your question yes i think it's great to keep bringing that up and uh and you know in answer to to rafa's question yeah you can set your you can totally set your your project up like that um that's tough not a lot of people want to split um you know it's tough to get split uh uh royalty split like that right now and and what domino had to do was he had to have it all come to him and then he had to pay everyone out in fiat so in some ways we're not quite there yet but i think manifold might have some some answers to that um i just want to ask rafa do you have your project you know i'd asked you to come and and talk about your project because you just dropped it yesterday or the day before right and do you have it pinned somewhere like is it your pinned tweet yeah jordan i have um a project where uh, I mm, developing a uh, experimental uh, documentary about my friend Ezekiel, and uh, and he's a Venezuelan performance who had to uh, run away for his house in Caracas due to his uh, sensual or, uh, sexual orientation. He came to Madrid. He was uh, without paper, living an early early morning on the street doing performance. Uh, little by little, he. Uh, gaining recognizing in, in networks, uh, people on the screen uh, mm, recording uh, with mayhem, and he logged into a uh, social uh, network, and people uh, from the world of dance uh, begins to uh, meet him. Uh, he begins to work as a uh, choreographer and began to mm, uh, make friends in the world or uh, audiovisual industry. Um, we meet at Clubhouse and uh, had a artistic crush, you know, and we meet and he told me uh, the whole story about him. Uh, every time he, he, he had, he, um, uh, doing, uh, he's doing a performance, he feels like there is a, a base, there is a base inside him that is, calling him uh, and with his 
in which he has to um, uh, I don't know exactly uh, give shape uh, and I uh, really like uh, everything he told me and we are developing the idea and we want to build some very uh, very strong visually and and recently uh, discovered the, the wall of NFT discovered your 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 discord your uh, your Twitter I uh, discovered uh, 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 Miguel with Calladita uh, NFT uh, NFT squad filmmaker and the truth is I would like to carry out this project uh, into the NFT space. Ah, Bali. So, the I just pinned your tweet up top for everybody to take a look at. Please retweet it if you're in the in the room and and give Rafa some exposure. Um, so you have not shot it yet, is that? And you're just oh my! It. Oh yeah. Do you refer to my uh, all is lost collection? I'm sorry, sorry, Jordan, sorry. Is that different than than? Than what you're talking about, you got yeah, it's different. It's different. <laughs> it's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, uh, so, but this is the one you dropped just a couple of days ago, no? Yeah, I have released. Um, I have released um foundation uh, two weeks ago. Uh, I exactly, and. And uh, the, the project it, it, it is my uh, my most personal uh, project uh, because um, uh, I don't know exactly. I had to. Um, I don't. I don't want to. I, I don't want to be annoying uh, because I don't know if this is the place for uh, for doing that. But but I want to. But I want to share uh, my experience. Um, the the the, th uh, the thing is, I, I had to deal with the with the black hole. Call it depression years ago, due to many circumstances. I mainly working on something very, very different for what I do now. And uh, uh, before I, I was working as a telecommunication engineer. Uh, it was a job that consumes me not only physically but mentally. At, at the time, I. Um, I have discovered cinematography and photography, and I, and I want to keep that job and work in the film industry as cinematographer. But the years went went by. The time to to take the the, the bill uh, the bill lay never never come. Um, frustration and imposter syndrome uh, take over me, and I feel into a very a very negative sp a spiral of feelings, and I didn't know how to get out of it. And I sank into a black hole. I was and un, un, I was down hurted. I didn't want to meet anyone. I didn't want to anyone to see me. The only want to the, the only thing that uh, really my pen is one taking photos, but I didn't want to be. I I, I don't want to be in them. So I put a, a books on and I drew and I drew a face uh, without any expression. And so it was how my photography project always lost was born. So uh, it's like all this loss is is my in, uh, it is this in the the inside of my black uh, my black hole. This uh, project was uh, a great help for me because seeing all all these f photos I I mm, all these photos talk, I took made me reflect uh, on myself about my my mental health and I asked uh, for physically help. I was able to take that bill deal you know uh, mm, nowadays uh, mm, uh, I don't know exactly um, I'm, and nowadays currently uh, I work in is something that and, and I can call war and I really feel like I'm very uh, privileged person for it I meet wonderful people on the field industry I very exciting to keep uh, running about personally and mm, um, helping directors with my gaze to capture their vision. Um, um, hey, Rafa, thank you for Yeah, and, uh, uh, I I, and I this is... Uh, sorry, Rafa, Jordan, sorry. I have, I have a question. So yeah. this pinned tweet that we have of your of your work there that, that is um, All is Lost, which is based on your story and your depression, it's, it's already, it's available for people. To collect, yes? yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's, it's, okay. it's true. It's uh, the 
all is lost is uh, available on on foundation uh mm, only two pieces uh was sold uh was sold and uh there is a still uh three piece uh on sale and mm, and i don't know uh mm, you have any question about about project or about how to create it no, no, no. I just wanted to be able to. I, I thought that the work was really moving, and uh, and so when I when I contacted you and was like, "Come talk about it," you know, on Wednesday, um, it's because I wanted people to know about it. So first of all, congratulations for selling two pieces. Um, I think that there's a uh, an unrealistic expectation in the NFT world where if you don't sell out immediately or you don't sell something the day that you meant it, um, because you know we do we see an incredible amount of success stories. Uh, but um, you know, I, I yeah, you're right. But from 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 some very dark and negative, you can uh, you can get something very beautiful. Uh, uh, while I was getting hell, I started uh, writing during this process. I carry out uh, uh, two surfing, uh, which helped me to make myself known and uh, known in the industry industry field, and and. Uh, mental health is, is something that you can enjoy, but uh, you have to take very serious. But um, with phot- uh, with the photography, is a, a beautiful um, a beautiful form to uh, develop uh, your imagination, and um, you can develop a project uh, with um, this uh, um, narrative and um, I. There is uh, there is a lot of um, things you can uh, you can help help you you can you can help help you you know for sure for sure for sure I mean I taught uh, master classes of acting all over the world and by the way I taught um, I think twenty five workshops in Madrid alone over a few years and one of the things that I used to say to my actors was that all those life experiences those are your treasures. And it's from those treasures that you were able to find the humanity to be able to serve the story. Um, I'm going to take a second, Rafa, and just sort of um, say thank you for coming up here. And also, we just have uh, 20 minutes left. Um, and I want to reset the room a little bit and, uh, and let people know about some of the things that are coming up uh, over the next couple of weeks. Um, the NFT Filmmaker Squad has been uh, meeting every Wednesday for a year. Um, and... Uh, and, you know, our purpose, my intention when I founded it was to, to be a destination point for filmmakers to come together just like this and to to be able to pioneer this this place together to share the information, the insights, the brainstorming, the innovation um, and 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 create a world where we as filmmakers can can have a sustainable living where we can create the world that we want um, that. Uh, where the the majority of the revenue share goes to the to the artists and 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 not to major corporations. Um, so I just want to say thank you to you guys for coming in today. Um, we have grown because the space moves so very quickly. Uh, I'm sure most of you know who Miguel is. We have Mondays with Miguel now. And he hosts and brings in people that he wants to speak with. And then we have Saturday matinees with Jason Charnick. And uh, and Jason's got his late night dreads coming up. Uh, he's been holding that a little bit close to his chest, so I'm not really sure exactly what's happening there, but I know it's happening soon. So um, he has sat- the Saturday matinees. Um, if you want to, to join our community, you can join that Discord. And uh, and what you will be able to um, find out there is that we've got some cool things coming up um, next Wednesday. We are actually not going to be here, but we're going to jump over to Miguel's marathon space because he's dropping his feature film nft project Kaelita, and uh, we're going to be there to consolidate the support for him and bring as many eyes to his project as possible and then uh, the following week the following wednesday we have machin uh, amik uh, from riverdale come in she just directed a feature film they're in post-production and they will be rolling that out it actually has to do with mental health um, and, and activism. So it's uh, going to be, I think, a very powerful room. Um, Sheila Darcy is, is one of the guests who, if you know her, she is um, uh, sketch poetic and she talks a lot about mental health and that's her, her um, thing. So 
I think that's pretty much it with what we've got coming up, except for March, uh, March 4th, special surprise. Keep an eye on the Discord, what's happening, and or keep an eye on my Twitter. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's for the community. And, uh, and thanks, you guys, for, really, for, for coming in. Um, if you want to come up on stage and, uh, or ask any questions, there are no dumb questions. Some of them we're still trying to figure out, and uh, then please do. Um, we've got about 15 minutes left and, uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions or if somebody else up here has far more experience than I do in something like Ted does with what he's doing, um, then, uh, we're here to, to chop it up with you. And that was a drop mic moment. <laughs> Um, all right, Ted, since I made you stay up here, I want you to, uh, to I want to talk a little bit more about what you said, um, because as someone who did a Kickstarter and and again, it was one of the first successful ones, but I never did another crowdfunding thing because I didn't there was something about it that I just didn't like. And at the same time, you know, looking into this whole NFT thing, we've been you know, I love the idea of creating community and being able to build out utilities and like. Um, you know, seeing people get super excited about being actively involved in a project. Um, but, you know, we've got very lately super, super careful about saying the words investor, investing, uh, financial recoupment, things like that. So I was so curious as to maybe you could expand a little bit on what you were talking about, which was um, having something to do. <laughs> See, I don't even understand it. Um, maybe you just tell me what you're talking about. Well, we got, we have two ways to go about it. I'm like you, we don't talk about investment. We just, if, if, if there's no uh, formal structure, legal structure in place, we use the term patronage or mass patronage, right? Crowdfunding from a artist patronage perspective. So just, um, two steps. So first of all, the platform could be used for patronage instead of paying GoFundMe um, their percentages instead of being lost in the GoFundMe world now depending on which chain you build on most chains have wallets and then those wallets have uh, codes that are available copy and paste type codes to create paywalls that that could be used to access information and you can even just have a simple paywall that says donate and now when somebody clicks donate they're either donating a specified price or they have the ability to fill in the number and donate as well. And so I, I, I personally am building on the Bitcoin SV protocol because it's just like Bitcoin. They're the same protocols except for the tech that's um, the tech that's being deployed to facilitate the payments allow us to do almost instantaneous payments and then those payments are 0.005 is a big number to us. So if people are on Ethereum right now, you can, you can, you can have a successful sale. You can promote and receive a lot of money, but it's going to come, it's going to come at a cost of, uh, of a gas fee that, that could put a lot of people out and a gas fee itself would be a good amount to receive from anybody. And so, we're building on Bitcoin SV for that reason that we, we have the, the stability and the immutability, meaning the forever transaction using the Bitcoin SV protocol and the Bitcoin SV ledger. But we have far significant um, price reduction in, in, in the fee. So if we were to generate an NFT, if, if an artist understood how to create their own N NFT, on the Bitcoin protocol, they could generate an NFT for half a penny, generate 10 million NFTs for a half. one transaction to post uh, a, a ledger entry that says 10 million. And now you're going to manipulate that entry by selling those those tokens. And then each time the token is sold, it will reduce the, the balance on the ledger and then bring that possession of that token into the wallet of, of the purchaser. I don't want to get too technical, but that's sort of what we need to understand as as people working in this space. If that is too technical, then we need as filmmakers or artists to really do our homework on why we're here. Right. And so that that has a lot of us gravitating to the existing platforms that are, you know, purchase this, sell it here. So now you have issues 
with hacks and open C and you have issues with uh, balance and transfers and, and fees that, that are really called friction and blockchain technology is designed to eliminate friction. So because we don't know this and we seek the best solution, we might get stuck in a situation where we're adding friction, meaning how, how attractive is my NFT to people in India or, or Af West Africa where, where they have vibrant film communities, but a very uh, a lower income per capita, right? So we talk about donation. So right now to, to create a wallet for the project on Bitcoin SV is instantaneously and free. Then to take some code, whether you're using what we call a money button wallet, there's a hand cash wallet, we use a dot wallet, all for different reasons. You can then copy and paste some code from those websites that will give you the point of sale. And so now you're in business. Now you just need a message. Now you just need some content. And that would be the, the simplest form of receiving donations. And you could you can then, whether it be manually, give me a donation, submit to me your email or join the Discord, and then I identify your wallet and then you can then offer them either through Discord or through your own website access to certain information that the general public wouldn't have. So they're donating in the hopes that you can have success to make your project, but they're also getting access to the project in a way that we don't get from Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Legion M. These are these are scenarios where you pay money or you and you donate money. In certain cases, you invest money, and then you don't hear anything except for maybe some tweets and some updates. But they're having all the fun. The the the, the reason we're in this film business, besides telling stories, is that production is fun. There's so much going on. And as artists, we're making storyboards, we're creating concept art, we're we're costuming, we're casting. All this activity should be used for us to to present to our fans and our community so that they can vicariously achieve that thrill and that joy of the process. So that would be the donation in its simplest form. So what I've done is I want to say eventually that a project would be an investment because really, you know, at the end of the day, if we're doing it at the feature length level and we do it correctly and we do it in such a way that it has value the market is in the the high hundreds of thousands to millions if it's purchased by one of the streaming platforms that pay eight nine million dollars for for a feature film so so we we understand the economics of our business and we present the information as an investment and now we open it up to maybe more people who who are looking if you look at the success of legion m and how many millions and millions and millions of dollars have they raised in my my interaction with legion m not as an investor but somebody watching what they do i've seen them buy cadillac convertible and drive it around i've seen them at sundance partying in the vip but I don't see the revenues coming back. They're selling T-shirts. They're doing all this other stuff. And so we have a chance as independents to really come into this space by, by having the, the, the correct paperwork. And so what I mean by correct paperwork is the United States uh, Jobs Act, signed by Barack Obama, allows for crowdfunding to $5 million for Regulation CF up to $50 million for regulation A. So what does that mean to filmmakers? Well, it means that if you if you can afford the brokerage fee and the attorney's fee, you can now go to the public and talk about your project, drive them to a portal, a funding portal. They can read the information, the prospectus, look at all, watch your video, look at the, the images and, and the way you're presenting this project to them. And if they choose so, they can invest. And so what investment just means to them is they expect profits, if possible. And in the worst case scenario, they're issued a K-1 that reduces their taxable income for the following year. So there is a benefit in the worst case scenario, but we all want to have success. So right now, anybody with a short film that has, you know, say it's a, a three minute short film. Well, you probably got an hour's worth of dailies, right? You probably have some some music files. You have some sketches, some storyboards, maybe. You have uh, some location scout uh, footage or pictures, or you have the ability to generate this and even go back and do it again because you have the dailies, you have the content and you have the takes. And now you can arrange that information in a way that allows donors or in the other case investors let's just go back to donors to buy an nft like rafa's doing right now raise four or five thousand dollars to be able to go to the portal uh 
And now that now you can get to a portal and now you can present the feature length version to the public as an investment because you were able to a portal costs twenty five hundred dollars. The attorney is fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred, depending on how much they have to 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 work. And, 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 and then once you have your exemption, now it's an investment. Now we're in the movie business. So Okay. Uh, I love this. Right no, no, no. I'm glad. Like, I'm glad I had you repeat that because I think that, that again, this is a, aside from the Bitcoin, right. And I get the whole Bitcoin thing. I mean, you know, the, 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 the frictionless, all of that. And, you know, and well, Bitcoin's the OG, right. So, um, but just, let's just say just any cryptocurrency at this point, if we, if, if we, um, just for the sake of talking about what I want to hone in on, which is what you're talking about, which is basically sell some, some NFTs, get enough money to get a por- into the portal, and from the portal, then you can sell securities. For cash, for U.S. dollars. For right? U.S. dollars. For U.S. dollars. Which is a more secure thing to a lot of people who would consider themselves investors because they still think that crypto in itself is super, super, super. And you uh, can't, yeah, you can't right. get an escrow account from a U.S. bank by accepting crypto because right. of the FDIC um, insurance policies. So, right. So this is we, cool. Yeah. So what we can do, because we're in the space, once they're on board, we have a flexibility to airdrop them a, a key, basically a pass and call it an NFT. But it's a pass. It's a password. It gets them into the, the website. Anybody can take a WordPress website, upload files, go to Yahoo domains, get you a domain and get the web hosting service for 150 bucks. And now you create pages um, and you can present data. And if you if you can get um, a, a situation where they have to log in or sign in to have access, then now only people that have purchased the nft or have been airdropped the nft can now participate in the in the production content that i've described because i really think that as filmmakers that's what we have to that's what will separate us from the other projects is that we let them inside right i think that that this is a really cool thing i feel like that jennifer esposito tried to do this in some way with her project I'm not, I can't remember exactly. Did you did you look well, at that pitch deck? You know, I haven't. But see, here I think here here lies the problem is that the the filmmakers have come to this space in maybe the last year, really saying what's going on over there. Who's getting a hundred thousand? Who's getting five hundred thousand for some pictures, right? And can we come in there and 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 put a round peg in a square hole? And so I think my approach was coming at this from 2016 i understood the filmmaking process i'm a producer i've made movies for roger corman i've been on the disney studio lot in development for alex rose i was also at um, afm for several years licensing films to the international market so i understand a contract space from copyright to international distribution licensing. And so I knew all this before I knew about NFTs and I knew about all this before I knew about blockchain. So when I went to blockchain for the very first time, I tried to look at it as a ledge, an accounting system that would allow for the first time in history, the back end to truly mean something. That, that you can create a system of contracts and wallets that when any revenue came to the producer or to the production and placed in the wallet that designated by the contract, which is a legal obligation, if you don't put the money in that wallet, you're violating co- contract law, that that wallet would instantaneously separate the payments and nobody's calling the producer or distributor talking about where's my money. That was my initial understanding of how blockchain technology could benefit the movie business. And so I went from there and I said, well, uh, let's not stop there. We have composers and we have uh, publicists and we have agents and casting agents and all these people that are that are part of these payment streams that we need to as filmmakers i would need to focus on what a smart contract really is what metadata really is what is what is really given in exchange from one wallet to another whether it be rights and ownership those types of things i see somebody um asking a question i'll stop for a second yo uh great listening to everybody here i'm actually i'm not asking a question i just wanted to chime in because like I'm literally sitting here listening to the space and just okay. Handling. Hold on, hold on, Flinch. Let me just say one thing, because I I know that you're you've got so much experience. Um, we we are going to wrap up the room in about five ten minutes. 
And so I'm not bringing anybody back up on the stage and just thank you so much. Um, I will wrap it up uh, after Flinch and uh, gets a, a chance to, to add um, to the conversation. And, but also I just want to say, Ted, I think we should talk about, you know, finding a date to come back in here and like, um, dig deep into this again. I think this yeah, is the kind be, of thing. That'd be great. And we'll start from the basics and just work up to, you know, where I'm at and share how anybody else can do it if they really want to yeah. get their hands dirty, right? Yeah. Flinch, go. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just sitting here listening to you, Ted, speak and like literally emailing foreign sales companies for previous films of mine, you know, and like just getting reports and reviewing the reports. And there's some questions about like accounting and God, I cannot wait until we are in a world where this old system is just no longer in place. So I don't know. I just was having that moment and listening to everything you're saying. Um, it was just serendipitous and um, just, yeah, it's exciting. Let's keep building towards it. And, uh, and then also earlier, Jordan, I was so inspired by your story about your short film. Like it made me want to go make a short film in this space and release it like that. I mean, I think we should all be doing this as filmmakers. We do. Like, now is the time. Yeah. It's like, you know, I'm caught, I'm caught up in the feature length world, which it's like, we're all caught up in something, right? We want to make our feature. We're going to get, figure out the tokenomics, but like just the fact that we can all go make things right now and release them in this way. I think there's just so much potential there. So I was inspired. Got to get on top of the short thing. Um, thank you for this space. It was awesome. Oh, thanks for, for coming by. Yeah. I, I encourage everyone. I mean, Again, there's no one way to do it at this moment, to, but I do think that it's important. You know, I waited. So we started these spaces in February. I've been in crypto since 2015. I, I, I was working with Charlie Lee on a documentary and for, for Litecoin, and I, I, I've told the story many times. Um, they just couldn't see the vision of why they would need a documentary. Um, even though like I would go to talk at these blockchain <laughs> conferences, I'd be like, we need to harness, you know, media, you know, we need to harness the media. We need to like be able to bring this stuff into the living rooms for people. Like they should be able to pick up Netflix and, and, and be like, Oh, look at that documentary. What will that teach me? Um, and, 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 and now when you see like how Ethereum, uh, like, I don't know what they raised, like $2 million to tell their story. I, I those guys, I think it's amazing because I couldn't get $5,000 out of Charlie Lee, but, um, yeah, no, when I say that they just couldn't see the see the vision. Um, but uh, I do think that, you know, starting the rooms a year ago and really trying to figure it out and then being able to see people like Latasha, who's a, you know, who does the music video. She's a hip hop singer that does the music videos and seeing how she was really harnessing, you know, the 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 short form. Um, and I just knew that I needed the right story. I also know that I needed it to be my voice. It was going to be a Genesis piece. So I do encourage people not to, not to, you know, like throw things out there to really be thoughtful about, you know, your craft and what you want people to see. But at the same time, I'm struggling right now. I mean, really my, I've got two feature films that are ready to go. Some of them, I want, well, both of them are actually packaged. Um, one's in English, one's in Spanish. Um, and, and I also have a, a short, series um that's also in spanish that i've been working on for years and uh, when i say short i mean under two minutes and i go back and forth i'm like where what what should be my next step the feature film or just do some more shorts you know because there is something very gratifying about being able to see these things on the blockchain to 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 inspire others like the way latasha inspired me or the way jay harry edmondson inspired me with how cinematic his work was um, and I knew that it was possible. Uh, so thanks Flinch and Ted. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, we'll, we'll be in touch to, cause I think that this is the kind of conversation that we need to hear like four times before we understand it. We mean being people like me who have like to really stretch their brains for things like this. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who, who came through today. Um, it's never, uh, it's never a dull moment. It's always really cool. We're always learning really cool things. Um, some of the things, you know, like I said, we're still, we're talking about a year later, some of the same things, but then some things, you know, have just are moving at light speed. So, um, who knows what it's going to look like next week, but I will say that we will be here. Well, actually we won't, we will be in Miguel's space next week, celebrating him during our regular, uh, NFT filmmaker squad. And then the following week we'll have Machen and Mick and her film, but we will be here on Mondays with Miguel. We will be here on uh, at Saturday matinee with Jason Charnick, and we are in the Discord, and my DMs are open. 
Um, so thanks for spending time with us and, and contributing and being a part of creating the Web3. Um, I'm excited to see where we go from here. Thank you, guys. Have a beautiful day. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Look forward to coming back. Ciao.